Today I'm working on a house in Cheshire and I'm going to show you how to stop this turning into this. You're watching On The Trowel. My name's Kirk Johnstone. Let's get this old Victorian ceiling fixed. So this is today's job. We're in a, about a 1912 sort of Victorian house. And what the customer's got is a little section of the ceiling in the corner of the room here. It's starting to come down. So let me just take you a little bit closer to it so you can see. See, it's starting to come away here. Now, it's got quite a lot of, it's got quite a bit of movement to it. Now these ceilings do by nature have flex and spring. It's a lath and plaster ceiling it'll be. And it will move up and down so slightly. What we're gonna do, is fix this. I'm going to push this back up into place. So I've got a plasterboard prop that I'm going to use to push that section of the ceiling back up and hold it still. Now obviously I can't just use the prop by itself because that would go straight through the ceiling. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of this insulation. But it's nice and soft, it's not going to damage the ceiling or hurt it or break it too much. It'll just nice and gently sit on the ceiling and this being foam the prop will go straight through that as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put underneath that my spot board that's as much tension as i'm going to get on that it's pushed it up enough and it's not going to move so we can do what i need to do above now Okay, so now we're upstairs, we're above the damaged section of ceiling and um, the fact that this board is here tells me there's definitely been something going on in this, this corner of the room so we're above the ceiling, I'm going to take this board up and see what's underneath. This board was a to get out. Right, nearly in, nearly in. There we go, that's the problem. Joiners, timber terrorists have been in here installing new joists. Obviously at some point they've rotted away. Now, I can see the problem instantly. The back of them laths, the back of that ceiling, those little timber strips, is not supposed to look like that whatsoever. There's meant to be plaster oozing through between all those little gaps. Now the timber terrorist, whoever he may be, has probably chopped all those off to make his installation of his joists a lot easier for himself. In doing so, he's weakened the ceiling. That's how it's supposed to look. See there's plaster oozing up and over, like mushrooming over. That's what you're supposed to see on the back of the laths. There's no plaster oozing up and through behind these laths. So, I'm going to clean this up now and I'll show you how to fix it. I mean, I can understand from the... Um, from the from the chippy's point of view, he's probably lifted the floorboards up and seen all that plaster and just thought, what a mess, and scraped it all off, thinking he's doing a good job at cleaning it up. Right, that's it now. The affected area is nice and clean. Because it's so dusty up there, I want, I want my plaster to stick to the back very well, so I'm going to stabilise the background. You could use a PVA or an SBR, but stabilizer solution is going to work much better Right, let's mix up some drywall adhesive. The background's been stabilised, so the adhesive will stick well, it's not just sticking to dust. Now, I'll mix this fairly wet, because I, I actually want it, I want it to flow underneath these laths. So I haven't mixed it as thick as you would usually mix adhesive. So what I'm sort of trying to achieve here, I'm trying to get this nice wet adhesive to flow through between the timbers and bond back to the ceiling below. 
That's why I'm going to run it back and forth a few times to really help it flow through the timbers. Once it's attached to the ceiling, I'm then going to bed some reinforcing mesh, some render mesh, or scrims would work either. Whatever you've got to hand. I'm going to bed some of that on the back of this adhesive and then put some more adhesive on top of that as well just to make sure it's a nice thick solid coat of mesh embedded in it and that way the ceiling below is now reattached around those timbers but make sure it's propped underneath whilst you're doing this if you don't prop it underneath it can all come crashing down so be careful you don't want loads of dust and wet adhesive coming through downstairs do you That's it now. That's all been back plastered. I can't do anything else now until that's set. So I'm going to put this floor back down and um, please, I'll just call it a day for today and come back tomorrow because I don't fancy sitting around for four hours whilst that sets. So get this, uh, get this son of a bitch back in place. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. But it fits like a glove when it's in, so. one or two ways please please yes get in there my son. right let's get this scrimmed up let's get the SBR on and let's get this job finished just letting this SBR dry now I'm going to adjust in this corner it's, uh, it's all plastered on the back and reinforced reinforcing mesh and plastered on the back and now it's all plastered here it's solid again now I'm pushing up and down and uh, it's not moving at all so the back plastering's worked the treat we've meshed all the fronts of it and we'll skip over this now I had a bit of multi-finish in the back of the van so that'll do let's get that used up I got sent this bucket buddy which is like a silicon sleeve that goes inside your bucket like this see and uh, Apparently, you don't have to wash it out, it just breaks out dead easy the next day. So, since it's Sunday and I'm being lazy, that's what I'm using. It was mixed too wet, so I had to throw some other finish in that I had. So, the board finish is going in there now. It doesn't matter, you can combine these two, it doesn't really make a difference. So, I've got that section to patch in, the crack over there to patch up, and inside this cornice, I was going to patch the cracks up, but looking at the inside of it, I'll just skim inside there, and uh, that'll look lovely when it's done for them. So, let's begin. Right, so I've actually ran out of half-time plaster accelerator, so I know this is going to be a drawn-out little mix now. For what it is, I'm going to be here for a while. So all I'm doing now is just taking my time, making sure not to drop much, and try and keep the inside of the cornice as clean as possible, apart from the bit that I'm plastering. Right, that's the first coat on. Time for a little rest. Give that chance to set a little bit. Right, we've just sat down now for 20 minutes, letting that first coat pick up. I'm going to flatten that coat in now, and then I'm going to knock this stuff back up. It's not, it's not really that thick. Yes, it's going off a little bit. But I'm going to flatten the first coat in, knock that back up a little bit wetter, and give it all a nice wet second coat. Right, this is it now. No mad rush. I'm just going to give it a nice little flattening. The ceiling's a little bit out of shape. I have pushed it back up as best as I can and reset it. It's still still got a little bit of a dip in it so i'm just taking my time you won't see this that ceiling's almost three meters high you'll never see it from the floor but you can feel it when you're up there but there's a slight little bump in the ceiling it'll be fine i'm just gonna do my best to feather it in just taking my time i said there's no rush i'm going to use that same gear to second coat with so 
that'll set faster. Every time you remix plaster, it sets really quick the next go round. Trial doesn't really fit in this cornice very well. And I've tried not to damage any of the cornies whatsoever. The last thing I wanted to do was any of that cornies come down and have to start rebuilding that again because that really starts taking a lot of time and gets quite costly. It was just fortunate. The bit where the cornies had cracked was on a nice big smooth section that I could actually re-skim. I mean, the chances of that happening again are minimum. Normally there's all intricate little details in there. Look, you know when I say I don't drop anything? It's all lies. Look, look at this. Let these all down, I'm sorry. So this is the second coat going on. I trialled it all up, cleaned everything down. That's it. Job done. Inside the cornice, plastered. In the main area, it was falling down. Now, nice and solid, and patched in. Right, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Look, I genuinely enjoy making these videos. And if you appreciate them and you'd like to buy me a pint to say thanks, get Kirk a beer. There's a little link in the description of this video. And trust me, it is very, very much appreciated. Also, whilst I've got you though, know, if you're a tradesperson and you're trying to bring in loads more work through the likes of social media, Google, I've got another little link in there and it's for my sales and marketing course. You can jump on that. There's a step-by-step -step system it's for all tradespeople to show you how to generate work from social media, how to rank number one on Google. You're more than welcome to jump in. If you click on the little link and you're not sure if it's a good fit for you, there's a little form to fill in and we can have a consultation call and make sure we're not wasting each other's time. I want to make sure you're a good fit. Cheers and I'll see you on the next one.